This is uh, Tim Rohr for the Utah Conservatory. Uh, this is our, our one of our week one videos in our music theory for composition uh, course. Today, uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the three elements of music, at least the three elements that we're going to be talking about in this course. There are other elements to music, um, but these are the ones we'll be focusing on as we do this 14-week course. Um, they're also all interconnected, and how we use one will really affect the sound of the others, but we're going to focus on them as separate elements uh, throughout this course. Uh, so the first thing that we've got for these elements is melody, and then we have rhythm, and then we have harmony. Now, melody is how high and how low pitches are, and um, how they move over a period of time, and also how they relate to each other. Uh, we have two examples of these. Uh, we have the dies irae, which is what's called the Gregorian chant, and we'll talk about uh, monophonic, homophonic, and uh, and other textures like that off in the future. But uh, dies irae is what called what's called a monophonic texture, and that's because it has one single line that moves up and down. Um, we'll also talk about this dies irae um, in uh, in a future course when you talk about motives in music and structure of music, because uh, it's very popular and been used for a long period of time for um, for creating a certain feeling in, in songs. We also have uh, the Bach cello suite, the prelude to that uh, number one cello suite, that is also um, uh, just a melody line. However, when you listen to it, uh, Bach himself uses a lot of harmonic, uh, um, harmonic ideas, and so there's a lot of harmony related to this, even though it is just one line. This is, again, how these are kind of interconnected with each other. Um, we also have rhythm, and the rhythm is how long notes and silences are held for, and how those rhythms relate uh, relate to each other uh, in different lines. For our examples for this, we have first off uh, a piece by Steve Reich, a minimalist composer, um, and his music uh, is, is sort of simplistic in nature. But clapping music itself is a wonderful example of rhythms. Um, the composer, uh, Steve Reich, what he did was he created one rhythm that first off for eight bars is, is clapped together by two performers. And then after that eight bars, one of the performers shifts the notes by just an eighth of beat. And how those rhythms interact with each other creates the different feelings in this entire piece. And it keeps shifting just one eighth of a beat at a time until the, the whole piece is finished. We also have a piece by a uh, percussion ensemble called Rung, Rung Again. And uh, another uh, example of how rhythms can really drive a piece, how they can really um, create a feeling with the piece. The last element we're going to be talking about today is harmony. And harmony is how pitches, um, how high and low they are, how they interact with each other uh, throughout a piece. Um, and we have some different possible textures for, for harmonies. We have a homophonic texture, um, a polyphonic texture, and a heterophonic texture. Um, an example of a homophonic texture is Pastime with Gum Good Company, written by King Henry VIII. Um, and with that, you've got one line, and all the harmonies line up almost perfectly with that, so that it's they're all moving at the same time. And we also have a polyphonic texture. Um, the example for that is uh, Bach's Fugue in G minor. And with this, each line has an almost independent role, uh, so that each one is very rich in, in, in kind of a melodic sense, um, so that it becomes very thick as we're, as we're hearing that. Um, the last example is a heterophonic texture, which is uh, Haydn. An example of that is Haydn's string quartet, which has one main melody line and uh, parts that kind of help support that. Um, this is the last of this video. Um, so we'll, uh, we've got some more things for this week one uh, course to talk about, but we'll call it good for this video.